Good evening, everyone, and welcome to another edition of the Pet Stamp Sports Show in Franklin County for Wednesday, December 2nd. 2020. I am the Nighthawk along with our studio engineer, Alan Ritchie Cunningham. And the monitor is on. I can see myself. And to my left is Super Dave Handy. And to my far right, Mr. Duke Forrest. And David, I've got to tell you, I haven't been feeling well this week. Um, I've tried to self diagnose myself. I <laughs> don't know if it's the flu or. If it's COVID, uh, <laughs> but then I figured out what it was. I have a severe case of Super Bowl fever, baby. Yeah, that's. So, <laughs> and how about how about bonus Wednesday evening football? Boy, pretty cool, huh? It's the game is just about done. I, I was watching some. Of yeah. Uh, so you know, we'll get right into it. My new. Hey, the first place New York Football Giants. The uh, if the season ended. Tonight they'd have a home game. Home game against the L.A. Rams. Why would they have a? Home because game? we're Duke. They're <laughs> we're divisional winner. winner. Come on, oh, we should yeah. get credit against, to against, with, uh, a while against one of the non-division. Right. Winners. Come on, give us some credit. We won the division. From well, a man, Daniel, how sounds like he's likely not to play uh, against the Seahawks. I Any think he's almost call? out against the yeah. Seahawks. Why, why, why bother? It's a game they're certainly very likely to lose. Well, anyway. the spread is 10 points <clears throat> yeah. right now. I don't know what a – well, there was no initial since Jones was injured during the game. Now, I will say this. It was a winnable game. I wouldn't put money on it because the Seahawks' defense yeah, terrible. is Not terrible. A good defense. It's been terrible. Hey, the Patriots almost beat them. Um, so we had a chance, but flying out to Seattle is a tough place to win a game. At no point during the season did I ever conceive that we would win this game. So it's kind of like, you know, it's a give I me. give them maybe a one in four chance. Yeah. Um, so who we're talking Col- Colt McCoy. There's yep. a bla- that's a blast from the past. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Um, he served serviceable backup. Anyway. Right. If it means anything, he's one of the better backups. But with that being said, there's no team that could win the Super Bowl with a backup quarterback. Although um, the, the Eagles seem to have managed yeah, that against right. my Thank Patriots you. a couple right. of years yeah. ago. Right. Thank you, Duke. Chris uh, I still don't believe that game. Paul's <laughs> played out of his friggin' mind that game, and he hasn't done a heck of a lot since, has he? No. Well, he's he's done well with the Eagles. He. He okay, did all right with the Eagles. Point. Yeah, and he's, Foles is currently on the Bears. He's injured. Mitch Trubisky played last week. Oh, horrible, he's, horrible yeah, quarterback, yeah, and Mitch will be playing. And, again, when the Bears drafted Trubisky three years ago, they had some unknown kid by the name of Patrick Mahomes they that taken, was available. They could have taken and some Patrick bum <laughs> named Deshaun Watson was available. But <laughs> they, that like the same same yes. draft. Yeah, you sure? Trubus, Trubis, Trubisky, Trubisky got selected ahead of yes De, Deshaun Watson. Yes, really? ahead of Mahomes. Yeah. I mean Mahomes wasn't all that well known that touted right. at the time, was he? No, he but, he. But Deshaun right. certainly was. They right. won a national championship. Yeah, yeah but. Deshaun wasn't uh, not your classic pro quarterback. No, okay. no, he he's a good athlete. Your typical, yeah. a lot of your typical college quarterbacks that don't actually turn out to be pretty good. But he's a pretty good passer, Watson. Uh, hey, I, I take I yeah. take Watson. Yeah, he's in he's he's okay. He's he's yeah. a good player. Yeah, um, yeah. Hmm. So though nobody, nobody. In football is better than Patrick Mahomes right yeah. now. Yeah, he, he, he is. Unreal. He's in a league by himself. Yeah, and well, boy, do they have some fast wide receivers too. Holy moly! Yeah. That team. Oh, Tyree Kill. Whew. Yeah, I mean this guy is so fast. When he goes to bed at night, he shuts the uh, bedroom light off, and he's under the sheets before, before it even gets start. dark. Yeah, no, he's he's uh the the Chiefs. Yeah. Chiefs are really good. In fact, I although think their, de- their defense isn't isn't great, isn't it? Yeah, it's good, not enough. bad. Decent. Yeah, the defense. Uh, old friend uh, Spagnola is yeah. the defensive. So coordinator. defense is decent. Yeah, uh, uh, Tyree Kill first quarter last week had 204 yards receiving Unreal. in the first quarter. He only ended up the game with 269. Uh, right. But no, the Chiefs. 
The Chiefs are the cream. Yeah, they're they're awfully good. Yeah, Pittsburgh's pretty good too yeah. this year. They're, yeah, it's I don't think they're good. as good as the Chiefs. So I think uh, in a warm weather game, in a warm weather game, oh. the Chiefs beat. Yeah. Them. But well, we're talking eleven and zero. We're talking. Uh, <laughs> they're we're twelve getting and the, now. Sorry, twelve and zero. Undefeated yeah. season talk. Understandably, at this point, hey. I'm, I mean, I don't love the Steelers, but good good luck. I'd say just like I said for the Patriots, that they lost a game in their would-be magical year. I suspect they might have beaten your guys in the Super Bowl. I think that's just crazy pressure to have now undefeated the, uh, going into the Super Bowl. The, all the NFC East uh, this week all has losable games. There aren't any of them that mm-hmm. should win. Yeah. Um, they're well, all – of course, the Giants weren't on Sunday. Correct. Right. Yeah. I couldn't yeah. find them. No, I was able to watch probably most of the game on not live, obviously on YouTube. Why? With, why just most of it? Well, they were highlight packages about yeah. seven minutes each quarter, oh, really? where they condensed it. Uh, which was thank you very much. For, at least I did get a piece of the pie. So you couldn't, is that right? You, you were unable to watch the game I, too, huh? Right. I had, of course, had the Giants set up for the whole season. And then Saturday night, I see was either the Patriots game and the, um, on channel. Uh, Patriots for late. Patriots for later. Were, were the Patriots on Buffalo. Fox or the Buffalo game? Buff, Buffalo game was uh, yeah. the early yeah. game. So, yeah. Um, yeah, if I was going to miss any game this year, that would have been the game I missed. Just looking at the highlights, Giants didn't play well. Sh- uh, Should have well Should've won by a lot. Well, the yardage was the, the, the Bengals got the, the kick off. That's a killer. Yeah, they gave up a kick off. Teams, for Giants special teams were awful. Yeah, they almost gave up a punt run back late in the game. Really, the Bengals had the ball right around midfield wow. with about a minute left, just needing a field goal. And I already had unfortunately knew the score, so they needed to pick up 15 yards. So if I didn't wow. know the score, I would have said we're, we're going to lose this game. How, did and Daniel play a decent game before he went down? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yep. Yep. No no turnovers, 200 okay. yards. Yeah. Yeah. And what I like about the Giants, and when I start talking about New England, I, I would afford them the same compliment. This ain't your granddaddy's, or it is your granddaddy's football. The Giants are a run-first football team that I love. Now, the most important stat, aside from the winning score, the Giants had the ball for 37 and a half minutes. And they have been winning time of possession each week. It doesn't take a graduate from MIT. You've got the offensive, you've got the ball, defense is on the bench. It's a pretty good way of winning a football game. Keep the defense rested. Yeah. Get them salivating to get back out there. How much did Jones run, run Hawking? How many runs in that game for Jones? Oh, I don't think he that much. He, uh, he, in fact, did the hamstring pull on a seven-yard run. No, really. He's still their leading rusher. Yeah. Is that yeah. right? Yeah. 400 and what? 409 yards, yeah. I think. But it, but his run, he, he doesn't usually rush. It's usually when he when when he's scrambling and stuff. He does he does, does he do some running plays that are planned? Or a, a, a few. A few, but uh, huh. um was a running play that he was injured? Was that again a scrambling situation? It was just a, a basic run huh. and it wasn't even a hard tackle. Really? Um, Hamstrings are funny. You yep. never know. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I've huh. pulled a hamstring tying my shoe, you know, before. I mean, huh. it's just um, so the thing about Jones, um, you keep him at his home in Jersey. Don't even throw him on the airplane to Seattle. Yeah. Just whatever ice or heat, whatever you need to yeah. do. That would um, seem to make a lot of sense. And my mind is going blank. Who do they have the following week? And I, I should uh, know. No, they've got they've got Browns coming up. Maybe not the following week. Oh, yeah. like they have the Browns coming up. Uh, yeah. Now, the uh, Giants right now, according to the computer, we've got we've got uh, Seahawks next week. Then the following week, we've got the Cardinals. Oh, Cardinals. <laughs> then we have the Browns. Then we have the Ravens. Yeah. So, I think on a good day. You could expect to win one of those games. That got, would be that we, would be optimistic. Well, we have the Cowboys the last game, and then the Cowboys. So they they should be able to win two. Right. If that's they right. win three, 
They went three. We've got the division. They got the division right, right though. Um, and, and with two wins, you got a, I mean, a yeah. chance. The Giants are a 34% chance of winning that division. The Redskins are 31%. And let me tell you about the Redskins, even though we beat them twice this year, they're young defense. They've got a pretty good team. Yeah, they're, it's really maturing. And Alex Smith has just calmed that offense down. Uh, you know, Redskins have as good chance as the Giants. And, of course, if we both end up at 6-10, and 10, we obviously have the tiebreaker by the virtue of beating them twice. Now, what about if they end up tied with the Cowboys? Uh, we play the Cowboys at the end. So let's say they're all let's say all three of those teams are five and ten or five and eleven. Five and eleven. But they go to like point and most no, the, Giant, the Giants had the best record in the division. Right. I think best that's what will, will occur record. is the Giants would have it. Of course, who knows? We, now the Cowboy game was on what, Thanksgiving? The Cowboy yes. played on Thanksgiving yes. against, against the Redskins. So. And Duke, if you would have told me I'll bet you ten thousand dollars and I'll take the skins. I would have eaten that bet right up. I, I thought Dallas Andy Dalton is back, and they what was it like forty six to seventeen? I don't see uh, I don't see the McCarthy hanging around too much longer. I, I absolutely agree with you. Yeah, he doesn't seem to be getting good words. A bevy of coaching changes. Yeah. Uh, now keep in mind uh, when the Giants play the Cowboys, the Cowboys are playing for. Uh, uh, drafting position and right now they have the fourth overall uh slot in the draft uh jets going first and that'll be trevor lawrence jacksonville going second ohio state quarterback justin fields and since it looks that, like he might be a legit ohio state quarterback hawk when you right, say th- he's certainly more legit agreed than, than uh, haskins what, what haskins, haskins was never no. And the thing about Haskins coming out of Ohio State is he only had 11 starts in college. Uh, the third pick will be the Bengals, and they already have their quarterback. Joe Burrows played great, even though they have got an hurt. offensive line that stinks. Yeah. So they'll be going out with one of the better offensive linemen to come out in the last decade. Uh, Penny uh, Sewell out of Oregon. Dallas, at that point, would be picking fourth in uh, super stud Mikhail Parsons from Penn State, who opted out this year, uh, didn't want to deal with COVID and all that. So the Cowboys' defense is horrible. So th- they don't want to win that division. They they just want to get that good draft pick and get a new head coach in there. Well, it's going to be uh, it's going to be fun. Actually, it's fun. First place, New York Giants. China, the Giants, boy, I mean, I listen to a lot of uh, sports talk. Giants are getting pretty good word. seems like most people are buying into them being an up-and-coming team. What's too bad is they lost a couple of games. They really should have yeah. won. Yeah. At least one or two of the, those first three losses. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. The only game they were blown out is with the 49ers. Nick Mullins destroyed them. Right. Um all right, and I would have told the the, the Niners were favored by like four or five. Shoot, the Giants had Pittsburgh. They went they went to the last yes, play of the did. game against Pittsburgh. Right. And if we end up playing the Rams for the sake of this conversation, they beat us by seven eight points. We were in it the whole game. It was like a. 17 to 8 game or something. Yeah, Tampa Bay was not the game that close to getting it into chance to get it into OT. Tampa Bay, they uh, that one went to uh, a two point conversion, yeah, right. Right. So they get it into no, uh, the Eagles game they should have won. Yeah, the that game was a that was a bad loss. Giants are in the best position over the next five to ten years. Of, of, of being the best team. Yeah. Um, the Cowboys really have to revamp. The Eagles are just a total, total junk junk pile. Although they're de- their defense, not a bad defensive mm, team, is it? The, the, I, I think they're going to have a new GM, new coach. Yeah. Geez, they, uh, they've had a Super Bowl hangover now for about three years. Yeah. Yeah, boy. Yeah. <laughs> Haven't done much since the Super Bowl. Because he sure was good in the Super Bowl. Yo, he... And the Eagles have been, I think the Eagles have been a toughest team the Giants have had to play. Well, we hadn't beaten the Eagles in what, six years, something like that, right. until this, this season? Right. And they've always found a way to beat yeah. us. Yeah. So, but Daniel Jones, um, 
you know, Duke being a Duke graduate obviously supports him. And I think both of us have been pretty, pretty loyal to him. Um, I seen things in him that I said, he's got the tangibles. Number one, accuracy, Danny Dimes, the, the guy can throw. Yeah. And what we've seen here in the second half of the season is just better pocket presence. Yeah. Uh, that This would have been his third game in a row without a turnover. Now the game or the interception, he throws a ball to Evan Ingram. It was low, but he's a professional receiver. Should have caught it. Went off his hands, bounced up, and the defender got the ball. Well, Sorry, didn't what, the guy punch it out on him? Or after Hawk, was, this, it? was this a last? Yeah, you're right, David. It was wasn't. It was a Engram caught the ball. He was going down, and the defender punched the ball out, and the ball came up. That did that go down as a fumble to Ingram, David? I think it did. Okay, no, as opposed to an interception. Yes. Oh really? Yeah. I think so it went no, as a fumble. Yeah. So not if it, yeah. not a turn, yeah. and it wasn't it wasn't Jones's fault anyway. And Duke, let me tell you, being smart isn't a bad asset for a quarterback. I wouldn't uh, think so. You know, you can see the intelligence behind Jones. I I love the pick when they took him, and it, it's a to me a three year process. I, I give the NFL quarterback a lot of rope the first three seasons. Yeah. Um, I expect some miscues next year. Um, but I, I like what I've seen so far. Um, and it just seems like a pretty together. I mean, it's a like, again, Jones is my key guy. I like him, but I'm getting into the Giants largely because of Jones. But it just seems like a pretty together, likable team to me. Yeah. And David, you know, going back to Saquon Barkley, I mean, Saquon who? Wayne Goldman Jr. <laughs> is carrying the pill. The Wayne train. Yeah. Uh, um, boy, I saw my Blue Devils a rear. Uh, they happen to be on Nesson Friday night, a live game against Georgia Tech. Kind of a wild game, like 50 to 30 Georgia Tech won. But one of the weirdest plays, uh, Georgia Tech was kicking kicking off. And for some reason, the, the Dukey guy back on, a, on about his goal line. Anybody see that? Did not. I'm, I'm trying to think why he would have done that. The ball kind of went through a couple of people. I guess he thought he could could call a touchback. It ended up on about the five-yard line. But the guy, the Dukey, who was you know, receiving, just kind of ignores the ball and doesn't deal with it. It was one of the weirdest plays I ever saw. And, he, and I think Georgia Tech recovered it in the end zone for a touchdown. Yeah. A very bizarre play. I, I just saw a clip of it or there something. Was some, there were a few really strange plays in that game. No, that was the Devils' last game of the year. I no, they might, no, maybe they might have won more. If they four year, two win. I told you, my good friend Roy, who's a season ticket holder from Vermont, thinks that Coach Cut has kind of run his uh, run his course here. The terminology is the game passed him by. Yeah, couldn't could yeah. be. Yeah. But not, not a good year for the football Blue Devils. Boy, it's funny, just a quick basketball note. I Duke Michigan State played last night. On TV. Yeah. I was tired. I fell asleep in the second half, but without the fans, and especially in Duke's case, I couldn't oh. even really get into it. Right. The game meant almost nothing. Michigan State, I assume they won, got up by 15 points early second half. And I was tired. I fell asleep, but I was so, and I don't know the Dukies having, you know. Being well, you won't because one they, they have all these guys that uh, aren't college students, these semi-pros that come in and go out. Right. Krzyzewski's soul is sold to the devil. Yes, I, I've heard that many times here. But <laughs> I'm just making the point. I just couldn't, I wasn't into it at all Duke, and fell asleep. Let me tell you, the, the, the terminology of the Cameron crazies, uh, I think, more than any sport would be college basketball. Oh, that's crazy. That you're going to oh, miss, yes. oh, miss sure. the fans sure. because you get a bunch of drunken 18 to 21 year olds. Absolutely. You know, and, and what the, the student section at Duke, I mean, yeah. um, a lot of them have their shirts off and all yeah, that sure. stuff. I think, the, uh, I think that's part of the problem with the UVM sports. Is there aren't enough college kids there, and there's too many old farts like us there. Boy, you've, especially, well, Hawk, tell you about it. Whenever I go to a hockey game with you, I'm just struck by, we might, there's, if we look close enough, the band's usually there, but how many UVM students are there? No, nobody. Right. They, they have their student section. It's nowhere what it used to be in the days gone by. And right. picking up on David said, and David knows some basketball more. That's what he attends. But the... College basketball, average age, the fan, and I'm not going to be facetious. David, you're 64. 
that you might be a tad bit young for the average age of the UVM and basketball. I appreciate team. hanging out with a couple oh, there's of a young lot of old folks. Like right, like there are a lot of there are people Duke in the seventies. <laughs> no, a I lot of imagine folks. That. But uh, they, uh, it's a very old crowd at UVM oh, basketball. Yeah. No, but basketball for some reason energizes a crowd. Well, hockey. Oh, yeah, the crowd. We have got a call. Got a call. Good evening. You're the first caller tonight on the Best Damn Sports Show in Franklin County. Hello. Hello. Yeah. Hi, Hi, Leonard. How are you doing? How are you doing, guys? Good. Um, uh, talk about uh, wagering sport. This has been one of the screwiest years ever. I've been so many games at the end. People stepping out of bounds at the one-yard line. Uh, yes. And uh, probably yeah. the biggest disappointment for someone was uh, Monday night when Seattle uh Beat the uh, Eagles 23 to 17. Uh, with 205 to go, I went to bed. Uh, I had like $10 and seven points on uh, Seattle. It was 20 to nine with 205 to go. <laughs> I shut it off, went to bed. But then uh, Seattle moves the ball apparently a little bit down the field and uh, hit the field goal. Uh, and um, <clears throat> You know, so uh, now it's uh, uh, 23 to 9, as it turns out. I wasn't watching it. And so uh, with 11 seconds to go, uh, Philadelphia throws up a Hail Mary and uh, score a touchdown, go for two points, and ends up 23-17. Yep. Some guy <laughs> laid $500,000, and he had this. Saints and six and a half points. <laughs> he got squeezed by a half a point. I mean, it really, it's been a bizarre year wagering sports. There's been so many, really, I, I, I've never seen finishes like I've seen here. You know, it makes you wonder something. I was watching that game, Leonard. It was a Hail, Hail Mary oh, pass, and uh, the receiver jumped up, tipped the ball, to to another well, player it. and it falls right in his bread basket. Uh, I mean, <laughs> one for two points. Yes, uh, and, uh, that that's what it, you know. And uh, I I showed the guy who bet the half a million. He must be wondering, you know, uh, what's going on here. But yeah. <laughs> uh, it is, you know, like the guy from uh, Cleveland. Same thing happened. Uh, the runner. What's the good runner from Cleveland? Nick Chubb. Right, it was a game a couple weeks ago. I saw it. He's, he's going in for a touchdown, and he lays the game. He just goes out of bounds at the one yard line yeah. on purpose, and they don't score, and they just kneel on the ball. I mean, there's been a lot of things like that happening. And, uh, so, uh, you know, I'm not a big wager. I five, ten bucks a game, so not a big deal. But uh, these they, guys that are betting me do funny, and uh, and, and just uh, you know, uh, the Steelers uh, just beat the Ravens, and. Uh, no, the Ravens uh, got a touchdown late to you know beat the spread there, and uh, they just completely outplayed. But I mean, for a COVID ravaged team, they really put on quite a show the Ravens, uh, even though Pittsburgh got plastered. Leonard, did RG three play the whole game for the Ravens? He played about eighty percent of it. Okay, then he got uh, hurt. He got hurt. And he got he, he got he got hurt. He, uh, and then they brought in the other kid. I forget his name. And, uh, he threw a touchdown pass. First ever one in the. Uh, NFL. McCord uh, or McCluskey and, uh, or something. I can't think that he was a big, he was all big 10 three years in a row for somebody. Okay. Okay. Uh, was it McSorley, Leonard? What's that? What was his name? It, it was a Mick something name. Yeah, McSorley, McSorley. Yeah, totally. Something like that. Yeah. Something like that. Uh, the Brian McCarty already talked to the Giants to death. How many wins are they going to have this year? The Giants? Yeah. I, th I would like to think we can get two more. Hmm. Now, keep in mind. That might, be, that might be enough to win it. Now, New England just beat Arizona. Okay. God, what a, what Air, Arizona is six and five. And keep in mind, Arizona won a game a few weeks ago against Buffalo right. on a last second, right. just throw it up Hill Mary. Yeah. And. I mean, they're a Hail Mary away from being a 5-16. Wow. The Giants have a legit chance of being St. Louis or yeah. uh, Arizona. Arizona. Well, I think they can beat Dallas last game of the year. Oh, right. That is uh, one. Dallas right. be playing for nothing. So. Right. No, we have that well, game I, chalked up. It's just. Yeah. And so, 
And I think we'll squeeze out another win there somewhere. Cleveland. I think two more wins. You, you got a legit shot, uh, especially if the Eagles don't come forward. I don't think the high, Eagles are. I mean, the issue. but if they don't win, it makes no difference. Right. I don't think Cleveland is that good. You know, I don't. I, I don't fear Cleveland. No. I think it'll be a ball. Well, I don't think the Giants. I think the Giants will make the ball game against the Seattle. I mean, nobody's getting blown out. There aren't many teams getting blown out in the NFL. Yeah. Unless you're the Jets. <laughs> well, yeah, but they, you know, we know what they're up to. I mean, uh, yeah. What, um, but, uh, hey, did anybody watch? Um, I don't think I've talked with the Jets then. Uh, did you watch the uh, the, the Mickelson uh Match the golf match. No, no, what? it's like a couple minutes. I just don't Leonard, get into don't get into that at that's, all. To me, that's great television if you like golf. Leonard, can I, I like tell golf, you? I just yeah. don't get into. But the course, I love looking at the, you know, the course and the geography and beautiful the beautiful Southwest. I just don't get into it. Leonard, oh, yeah. I enjoyed that three hours of golf as much as any golf Did I can really? ever remember. Oh. And. Two words will tell you why he loved it so much. Phil Mickelson. He. Oh, he's made for TV. He. Oh, yeah. He, he, there's no better trash talker. There's no better trash talker but than Phil Mickelson. Let me tell you he what. He can walk the walk and he can talk the talk. Let me tell you what impressed me. He didn't coach uh, Charles Barkley, he mentored him. He had the soothing talk of a grandfather <laughs> to his grandchild. He was so good with Charles. How did Charles play, by the way? Charles. For no, his, he putted well. Right. He he, he lagged, putted very well. Huh. Now, did they uh, did they give him well. strokes? Is there handicap? No, Charles was no. able to go up on the upper uh, oh, tee box, oh, right. lower tee box. Oh, they didn't. Charles. So, did. No. So they brought my favorite quote of the game. The favorite quote of the match. They brought Ernie. They had some people live, and of course, a lot of people were tweeting. As well, you know, during the day, read the tweets, and but why they put on a little, uh, you know, like a zoom off on the left part of the screen. That Ernie Johnson Jr. Uh, they had Shaquille, and they had somebody else, you know, the, the announcing team for the NBA, and uh, uh, Shaquille uh, Nicholson says to uh, Barkley, "Come over here to right angles to this line of the putt. I want you to read it from here." Mm-hmm. And, she, and, uh, and Shaquille says. Read green, he can't even read words. <laughs> <laughs> I, know, I know that was the quote, quote of the night. I that was the quote. Charles took it well. Charles took it well. Yeah. Uh, so, Hawk, you got, you got into that. <laughs> oh, Mickelson. Oh, God, yeah, that to me, I'm with you, Hawk. I'm with you. I, I, mm. I mean, short of a major, I love the majors when it's contested, but I, mean, I that was pure entertainment. Yeah, Mickelson, I, I'm telling you, I, I've always been. You know, lukewarm on Phil. We talked about him a couple of weeks ago. He's a Hall of Famer, but if he could putt and if he was less aggressive over the years, and his personality is a little different, but he was so good with Barkley. I mean, me lying there as a mediocre golfer, I could appreciate the help he was giving Charles. And oh, well, it, he, told, he, he kept telling him to clear your mind. <laughs> clear your mind. It, very good <laughs> very good advice for a golfer. Yeah, it, clear your mind. It, Get into your zen. It, That's just, what Nicholson kept telling you. Yeah. Just <laughs> listen, uh, listening to Phil, the science of the game. I mean, Phil yeah. knew everything. Would uh, and Phil, Phil make a good uh, color guy? Yes. Oh, oh Phil yeah. Nicholson. No, he's, he's and Phil good. wore shorts, and he had calves of a twenty-year-old. Uh, and Phil says he's in the gym every day. And the funny, and I know Phil's in shape, but he's always had a soft belly. Uh, he, he's better shaped today than he was ten years ago. But his calves were just a muscle. Yeah. You know who? You know, um, he. Uh, you know, one of his favorite days on tour. Is, is not Thursday, Friday, Saturday, or Sunday. It's Wednesday. The pro, the pro they am. play for big bucks. Yeah. They play for big bucks. And he uh, loves, he loves that. Uh, well, when we do at Champlain, playing for quarters and dollars, no, side they guys play for some real <laughs> money. And he, on Wednesdays, that's when he really loves it, I think, the most. <laughs> that's he, uh, he would make a great color guy. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Now, you know who didn't look very good in shorts? Who I think he's lost about 80% of his muscle tone is Tiger Woods. Tiger Woods looks scrawny now. Mm. 
Remember how big he used to be? Yeah. Tell me he well, was a nonsense. Tiger, right? Tiger, you know, Tiger, he won the Masters there uh, last year, and uh, God bless him, but I That's I, it. I don't see another major in the look. I don't, I don't see another win left in him. Yeah, you're probably right. You're probably right. But uh, I don't think he can uh, hold up for four games. But, but really, uh, Peyton Manning and uh, Steph Curry, some of the shots they hit, Hell, I could have played that. I could play as well as they did. Yeah, Leonard, Steph, I mean, Steph didn't play very Leonard, well. Leonard, let me think. Right? That was my next thing. I, for years, have read what a great golfer Steph Curry. That Steph Curry is. Read that. And huh. not that I would have beat him that day, but I would have got. You're a better golfer than I, David. You could have given Steph Curry. And the thing is, I think before the match, they showed he had a one handicap. Yeah. He was putting. Oh, yeah, well, we, know, he, we know how that works. So I think he acknowledged he had a he had a very well. It's tough like game. Brady was what a a five or summer. Brady didn't look that good either. I mean, but Peyton Manning, Peyton Manning hooked about a third of his drives out of play. Really? Yeah. The, I mean, we're talking severe hook. Steph Curry. Well, Steph Curry. He was in the bunkers a lot next to the green. Yep. Oh, he was awful. He, he was atrocious. Yeah. He yeah. did. He acknowledged he had a very. So the guy is a one. He better be able right. to get out. So of the So why would a guy say he's a one handicap when he's probably closer to a ten? Yeah. I think I, he, I don't know I think he just the, had a bad day, maybe. Yeah, yeah, I don't know what the ratings uh, were for that event, but uh, I bet you you'll see more of them because they're made for TV. And, I, and I'll watch them. I watched the one last year. Oh, I will. I'm with. I you. tried I to watch it. I couldn't watch. find it. I was. It was on out. TNT. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. I should have. Yeah. But what a core. I love I love looking well, at the core. Dude, what a beautiful course. The golf course. You know, I always tell you guys if you were going to die next week and you had one course to that play That wouldn't on. be a bad choice. And, of course, I always pick Kapalua. I fell in love with that course. Now, if your drive goes awry, you're in the desert, literally in the desert. And I mean, look out for I went on the computer that night to look at the course, see what I, the green I actually did that were. too, amazingly enough. And it was a, and pri- owned by Nicholson. It's a private golf course, and that's one Nicholson course. Owns it. Well, there's five, four or five other golf courses in that area that are all part of that conglomerate. Con- Conglomerate. Con- con- conglomeration is the word I'm trying to say. And yeah, it's a private golf course. Was it in Las Vegas? It's well, in yeah, two, it's outside of two, two Tucson. Tucson. Okay. Oh, yeah. It's what, classic Nicholson Desert Southwest. It. Right. He's part owner of, I mean, well, he's, more, well, he's majority owner. Yeah. I mean, and again, it's a total of four or five or six golf courses. Um, yeah. So. Well, you played, you ever played a desert course? Never. I have. I played uh, the yeah. where they had the Phoenix Open. Okay, I played a, a true north on FEMA and, and uh, Scottsdale back in the nineties. And that, one of the yeah, most they have water that I haven't touched. If you want to water, Saguaro cactus haven't touched it. The Saguaro cactus have holes right through them for the golf ball shit. <laughs> well, they told us it was a free drop if you hit it in a. Uh, uh, Oh, yeah, waste yeah, area. Yeah, well, you yeah. fight the rattlesnakes. You don't want to go in there. Yeah. Uh, but I never. The uh, safest thing in the world. And, uh, but I, I talked last week about the, the Worcester Red Sox, right? We meant, didn't I no, for that? The, as in the Woo Sox? No, you didn't talk Woo Sox. I didn't, but my brother was telling me that uh, he's seen the stadium is built just like Fenway. Didn't I talk about that? No. no, you did not talk, but I see pictures in Boston papers once in a while on the construction. No, you did not talk Wu Sox. Okay, well, Wu Sox, right? Uh, uh, from the Pashas to the Wu Sox, yeah. and uh, his uh, daughter had a piece of property uh, in Worcester, uh, and uh, it, the value of her property has gone up about 30%. Really? Ever since the announcement that they were coming to town, because huh. uh, it's right in downtown Worcester, this, huh. this stadium. Leonard, I got. Sure what you're calling the stadium? Uh, oh yeah, I can tell you because I drink the uh, their orange uh, polar polar stadium for the polar drinks. Polar oh, really? yeah. polar stadium, I think. I yeah. didn't think polar was that big big a deal. Yeah, I think I it's, I think it's fair, fairly big. I, yeah. Hey, Leonard, a trivia. You love trivia. Tell me, uh, tell me something about Worcester, Mass. It's uh, what something somewhat distinguishing about Worcester, Massachusetts. 
In New England, well, I, actually, I not much of a not much of a question. Many years, Sec, uh, second, Worcester. Well, That's where we went to that basketball game, Leonard. Some good college. It's not much of a question. It's the second biggest city in New England, but ahead of Providence and Hartford. Oh, really? Yeah. Really? No, I, w- I wouldn't have guessed that. Yeah. 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 I, I was in Providence uh, a few months ago. And, uh, I'd never been before. I was not doing breath. Really? Providence, uh, Federal Hill, got some good... And- Kind of, well, there's, I mean, downtown, there was some pretty architecture and stuff, but yeah. you don't have to get too far off the beat path. It's a very poor city. Yeah. Yeah, Dan, I think the heart of downtown, it's, of course, the river comes right into downtown. Of no, course. No, no, no. There's a lot of history there and a lot of nice architecture, but, you know, other than the immediate tourist area, you want to call it, whatever, I mean, it, it, well, you don't go far and you're right. You, yeah. Of course, that's where it looked like the thinking was. That's where the Paw Sox were going to end up. Providence folks made the big bid after it became clear that Red Sox wanted out of um, Pawtucket, Pawtucket. the old stadium and stuff, and they couldn't get it together. And Worcester obviously ended up winning the prize. Mm-hmm. Now, I would imagine that uh, a lot of people played golf yesterday. Somewhere, I guess Essex Country Club has been open, I guess. <laughs> I think there's certain things we we can't clearly talk about, but uh, that's not up for me to say. Yeah, there's. I think uh, Plattsburgh was open yesterday too, Leonard. From what I understand, what point? Uh, uh, Adirondack. Adirondack. Okay. I know somebody and, uh, that played there yesterday. And uh, also, uh, maybe North Country there in uh, Rouse's Point. I don't think they were open, but I'm not sure. I. I didn't hear from anybody that had went to. Well, I mean, at my age, I have no desire to play golf this time of year. I mean, I, if I was 20, 30 years old, that's a different story. But you well, know, I'm not too eager to play well, golf. Well, it, Leonard, it does warm up this time. Of hey, year. it was 60 degrees what, yesterday. What more do you nice. want? Burlington, record high of 66, breaking the old record of 64, set back in 1934. 66 in Burlington yesterday. It was pretty, pretty nice out yesterday. <laughs> Oh, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And, uh, I mean, we may get a storm here this weekend, and maybe not. It depends whether, I guess, it goes a little south of us. But, uh, you know, other than that, if we miss that, the first half of December is fairly decent. There's no big storm, but there might be if that tracks north, I guess. Yeah, it sounded like a... We're we're just less less than three weeks away from the solstice, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I always look forward to that, and, and then we're basically we're basically about fifty days from pictures to pictures. Ironically, the meteorological winter started yesterday on a record high temperature day. The meteorolo- meteorological winter being, of course, the three coldest months of winter, obviously December, January, and February. Right, right. Yeah. I'm no uh, I'm no weather expert, but I think that the seasons have shifted and everything's pushed about a month further back because it sure seems like March and April are cold and May's not really that nice either. But November has been better lately and we've had a few. To your point, Mr. David Handy, this past November was the third warmest November in history since they've started the records in 18... Thank you, Hawk, for correctly noting that. As opposed to, as uh, opposed to it was funny because I told my wife because our golf course closed three weeks ago, whatever, and we we could have stayed open. I mean, there was I, um, so many nice days out there that we could have played. The last two Sundays, I've taken Mrs. Handy out and walked the course. Really? In okay. fact, I've been I've been thinking and about doing beautiful. the same thing. Yeah, it's great beautiful. thing to do. Now I noticed they did rope off the greens. Yes. Yep. How and long? What does that take? Like a half hour, forty-five minutes? Nine holes you can do in less than an hour. Usually. No, that's a great, a great place to. Of course, I, my my main cross-country skiing is done at Champlain. Very nice place for cross-country skiing. Now I will well, tell he's you, he's got the greens. You all be, he, 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 you know, we got a we got a superintendent that takes it pretty serious. And yeah, he does. No, stay off but the he, greens. He has, yeah. he, he has the greens roped off this sure. year. Yeah. Oh yeah. No, stay off the. I, Leonard, do you remember? Do you remember when John Leclaire was? on strike that year and on December 7th or December 8th we played golf 
and it was about 75 degrees that day. And Bill Mazur had a hole in one. Really, a hole in one? Well, I, I don't, I can't say that it comes right to me at a moment's notice. But uh, I remember playing golf back in the '70s on New Year's Day with an elderly gentleman who lived on Messenger Street, and uh, I forget his name. I wish I could. He was like. I thought you were talking 80s. about me. Glad you're not talking about me. Yeah, and, and he was doing push-ups. And all kinds of exercises in the late eighties. I, I wish I could remember his name. We played golf on January first. I mean, uh, back in the seventies, it was a nice day. There was no snow on the ground. Hockey used to play off. That was probably the uh, same year my sister got married. <laughs> my sister Joanne got married the week between Christmas and New Year's, and it was like a fifty-five degree day. They were uh, supposed to go to JP for their honeymoon. And uh, there was no snow. It was it was gorgeous. So that was 30 years ago, way before. That was when we were still worried about uh, going into a new ice age. <laughs> <laughs> but, you want me to bring you stats from 30 years ago? I've got all kinds of the weather. Um, the winters were much colder no, then. It's, it's unbelievable how much colder. I got yeah. I got weather data for decades. It's unbelievable what I the, saw. Uh, These days we get one night. Five, ten below zero, right. and people totally freak out. I can remember in when I was first out of college and I was a service manager, I'm not sure if it was 1979 or 1980, we had like 40-something stray days where it was below zero at night, and we would have stretches like 50, 60 hours where it wouldn't even get above zero. Yeah, you had. I'm not sure. 40 might be a slight exaggeration, but you're right. Definitely had stretches a couple, three days. Oh, yeah. Zero. And, oh, and there was one stretch here in the 70s one year that, I mean, uh, it, every night it seemed like it was below zero. Yeah. Oh, and it wasn't just a little bit below. It was like 15, 20, 25 below. I can report on my personal watch, having been a cooperative weather observer for the Weather Service, courtesy of my employers, first the county courier, then Radio St. Albans. On my personal watch in Enosburg Falls, the lowest temp I personally recorded, official temp, minus 43, only seven degrees off the coldest temperature ever recorded wow. in weather record keeping in New England. The record being 50 below in Bloomfield, Vermont, in the kingdom, <laughs> and a very rural area in Maine near the Quebec yeah. border tied the 50 below about 10 years ago. But I was uh, just seven degrees off the coldest temperature. 43 below is really cold. Pretty cold. Of course you do. No, I should no, you get no wind. That was perfect right. cold conditions. No, right. no wind. Wind chill is a killer to me. No, I would have thought Mount Washington would have had some type of rain. No, but it's cold. I mean, wind chill wise, Leonard, absolutely. But cold air settles down. You're typically going to get wind as you get up in the mountains. Um, but wind chill wise, oh, yeah, for sure. But just pure temperature. No, you're going to do well in a cold spot like Enosburg Falls, just a valley area where the cold air just settles down. But temperature, mm -hmm. wind chill wise, oh, yeah, Mount Washington is. Insane. Do you remember what year that was, Rich? Well, I've got, I mean, I, I remember a bunch. I, I blew in in November 75. What, geez, 40, 45 years ago? Is my math right? Yeah. Um, just oh, those first know, winters. Crazy. I'd have to so look at data. That a, What's that? But was it your first year here? My first year, I, I blew into town, yeah, no, a couple of weeks ago, a um, couple of days after the Edmund Fitzgerald went down in the incredible uh, Great Lakes uh, storm. Um, but yeah, November 75. So my first winter was 75, 76. But some Do of those. Do you remember the 43 below reading? What year? That oh, was? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Um, probably circa 1980. I, I don't, I could, I, could find, I could find it okay. Probably late right. 70s, early 80s. Because I think I think the winters from 78, 79, 80. Oh, there were some unreal winters. Were really super cold. Yeah. Oh yeah, it's gotten it's gotten very soft. The lake right? you could drive my brother one time drove home from Plattsburgh across the lake. <laughs> you wouldn't want to do that now. No, it's nothing I'd want to do ever, but yeah, I sure would want to do it. Now. Same, in the same vein, yeah. I used to deliver the Burlington Free Press. Starting in the late 60s. You're not going to tell me about snow drifts. No, I'm talking high, about yeah. those were literally record years of snowfalls. 
back in the late to early 70s. Huh. But again, we've had this discussion before. I've got snow data, and I think some of that some of that goes back to when you were much smaller and just snow looked a lot bigger. The snow 1968 snow, or 69 right. was I, right was the uh, record. Uh, some years, but I'm just saying yeah. in general, in general, snowfall data hasn't changed drastically. Burlington's average annual is about 80 to 85 inches, maybe a little more up here, but not drastically. Get elevation, of course. JP claims well, they got 400 400 inches yeah. is what they claim. Anyway, but um, but sure, there have been particular years with a ton of a bunch of snow. Well, but anyway. with all this uh, talk of cold uh, temperatures, I think I I'm going to leave you and uh, I'm going to go down <laughs> cellar and just check out my furnace. <laughs> <laughs> you got me worrying, you know. So have a good night. Thanks, Thanks Leonard. Leonard. See ya. Bye bye. We'll get back to football because I do want to talk. Patriots with you, uh, turning our attention over to the diamond. I mean, I'm a broken record. Uh, There's nothing going on. Oh, has, there just, any, has, there, has there been anything? So What's question for you, David. Shoot. If next week is the annual winter meeting, which is kind of when the action really heats up, obviously there will be no sit down meeting dave let's go have a beer and work out a trade will they be a are they a, meeting in person right even? no right. there there isn't my question is will there be a zoom winter meeting and that's a question i ask you guys every week sounds like a good guess the dh <laughs> okay it's december already so not nailed down right huh? somebody has to come up and i'll give you a good example of, of, of a dh type question it is today the Chicago Cubs non tender Kyle Schwarber. Okay. Big mountain, mountain strong kind of guy. Mm. Horrible fielder, but the guy can hit. In the National League, I wouldn't have him on my team just because of his defensive liabilities. Mm. If they have the DH, Schwarber it is a poster child of what a DH should look like. Did uh, the Yankees non tender Sanchez, or do uh, we know that? The non-tendering goes till eight o'clock tonight. Oh, okay. Word on the street was Sanchez was was going to be safe of of not being tendered. Oh, really? Yeah. But has there been any? I mean, any baseball news There's at been all in the last some week? Some little stuff. Nothing of major interest. Yeah. The Red Sox. It, to me, this is a would be a good signing. Trevor Bauer's wife comes from Boston, really? and. Trevor Bauer, as good as Chris Sale used to be, when Chris Sale was like number two, Trevor Bauer for a four or five year stretch in which he had won two Cy Youngs. Trevor Bauer was, you know, the the, the But prospect. again, they'd have to, they're not going to pay any of them. I mean, we're talking mega bucks here, obviously, right? Well, for Trevor Bauer, my guess is you, he pitched one inning with Texas last season. Wow. One inning. Season before, he pitched 35 innings. Oh, really? So my guess, Duke, huh. would be a one-year, $3 million oh, contract. Take it oh, we're not talking Trevor Bauer. We're talking... Oh, you're confused. Corey Kluber. Hockey. Corey I'm Kluber. Really Cor Corey Kluber. Thank you, David. Corey yeah. Kluber, who I should have... All right. We, we are talking mega bucks for Corey Kluber. No. No, three no, million. That's who you, that, that's oh, who Trevor you, Bauer, who we're talking about. I'm confused. Trevor Bauer is about a four-year, $120 million yeah, deal. Right. That's, that's what I thought. Was, um, okay. But Corey Kluber, I, I apologize. Corey Kluber, yeah. Wife comes from Boston. Okay. okay. Uh, he's at the twilight of his career. God knows if he'll even come back to any sort of what he used to be but hasn't he had hasn't he had good pitching in recent in year no one, one inning last year oh, sorry he was, he was 35 about. the year before and again right. two saw youngs i got you uh, but that would be a player mm. you you take a risk on keep in mind as yeah. i mentioned last week red sox have approximately 35 million dollars to spend huh. this year, it's going to be a good market to spend because teams won't be spending. And I'll give you a good example: Philadelphia Phillies. The owner came out the other day said the team lost 145 million dollars. They may not even sign Real Muto. We're, right, really? we're, JT Real Muto. Argu no, no argument. He is the best catcher in baseball, defensively and offensively. I suspect he'll go to the Mets. Well, they'd I probably take back the Bryce Harper signing if they could well, right about now. Huh? I, I saw a video that uh, it was 
a headline, Bryce Harper was lied to because when he came to Philly, he was told, you know, we're going to build a team around you. Mm. Well, the team's lost so much money. Well, things have changed a lot. Right, absolutely. Right, you couldn't have. Well, when you don't have any fans. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, now, John Lester, which would be a cute story. Yeah. Whether it's true or not, I've heard a couple other places this would be a, a great final stop for John Lister. Putting the Sonics uniform back on, perhaps re-motivating himself. Hey, you could do worse as a number five starter. Absolutely. I think you could get Lester for $5 million. Oh, that, and I, I was saying... I'd do, I'd do that in a second. The, the Red Sox have $35 million to spend. Huh. You could have had it all in Mookie, or now you've got thirty-five yeah. to patch up this team. I, for one, as an outsider, yeah. I still think the Red Sox could have a pretty good ball club in 21. Mm, I'm not um, holding my breath. Right. Can I mention one Red Sox note? Um, to Tara Sullivan's been writing for the Globe maybe for a good year or so. Very, very good columnist, but read her column Sunday, the one paper I usually get. Although, actually, I'll get uh, some papers tomorrow. But anyway, her last sentence in kind of a grab bag column, and I've been over this ground many times on this show over the years. You can tell me quickly why I couldn't believe this sentence. I was so upset. Last sentence of the column. Um, oh, she's getting into new owner Steve Cohen for the Mets, and mm -hmm. so she gets into the Mets. Last sentence. Not so much in Red Sox history, again, it was a reference to the Mets, though, costing... Oh, I'm sorry, I'm just reading the graph above. Oh, she makes a reference to Bill Buckner in the graph above. So the last sentence. Not so much in Red Sox history, though. Costing the, the Sox game six of the 1986 World Series when it went through Buckner's legs. Do I have to tell you right. why that sentence incenses me? How can a good sports writer be that sloppy? Right. It was a friggin' tie game at the time. Buckner makes a play, flip a coin. How do you know it cost him? It didn't, it might, it didn't, it didn't, at, at the most you can say it. Yeah. yeah just go well, that's this is, standard. This is that's par for story. the course with today's journalists. Right, but right. This, is, this is a very good writer. And I'm going to email her and say, Tara, I love your stuff, but you, I, I talked about you on my sports show. Feel free to guest on it and get back to me if you want. They can't but, help but, themselves. But that's such a sloppy, I think she's just not thinking. I think they just don't think about Dude. it. A sports fan does not look any stupider when they say Bill Buckner cost for a soccer. Jeez, it was a tie game. Right. Anybody that watched the game knows it was their stupid But I gotta pitchers. think I'd like to think she's not thinking of that, that just in yeah. lore, Red Sox lore, yeah. yeah, it's come Buckner cost the Red Sox the game. Plus they uh, they had Or Billy Buck. They had Didn't uh we lose him a year or two ago. Yeah. Talk about a great ball player. You know, I wonder, I'm glad the Red Sox at least took they him finally, back. They finally kind of made amends yeah. and stuff. You know, I don't know much about death because I've never been dead. It's However, good. I kind Keep of like, it that way. Could that have just strained on him over the oh, years? Absolutely. Oh, I think, I, that I think absolutely have precipitated his death. He had didn't he nothing move, didn't he to move do to Idaho Boston. or something? He moved to Idaho yes, or something. In the middle of nowhere. Oh, he was, sure. Bill How Barker had, not? what, 2,700 hits? Yes. Oh, he's yeah. a, he's a uh, uh, Hall of Fame Edge, there, a couple of these last guys, he's better than Harold Baines was. Yeah, I agree. And Bill Buckner was a great I love Billy Buck. Player. Great player. If Buckner would have made that play in the first inning. Of course, he shouldn't he, have been shouldn't have been playing. He's hobbling around. Again. He could barely walk. Right, he shouldn't have been playing. But that, that just And he was a good fielder. That. Oh, very good. Before very good he got fielder. hurt. Yeah. Absolutely. Came up with the Dodgers, played some first, and right. also played some left field. Very, very good no, player. Great ball play. And I felt so bad about like that. Like you said, David, 27 100 hits, and he was the type of guy that hit 290, 295, yeah. year in, year yeah. out. So, so yeah, but I will, I will email her. I will respond to that sentence. No. Well, not to uh, get off subject too, too much. I got a book, a new book on James Baker. No, it sounds like Secretary by, uh, of State for uh, uh, Bush. By Peter, Peter Baker and his wife, Susan Glasser. Yes. Sounds like, sounds like a terrific book. It is, but. They can't help themselves. They throw in. Does he throw some some just junk about that? He them? throws some stuff Repubs. about Trump in there. No, really. And they always throw in something about racism. And you know, I they they just can't stick to the facts, ma'am. You know, mm. I um, and I love and and it is a very good. It sounds book like it's part. a very a very good. Very book, good. Yeah. Very good. And Baker is a real. 
quality guy mm. and yeah, comes is. from aristocracy of Texas. Oh, is that right? Yeah. His, I didn't realize uh, Susan Glasser was his wife till I read that about the book. His great grandfather or his great great grandfather was best friends with Sam Houston. Hmm. And his grandfather basically built Houston oh, really? and was the handler of uh, the money that uh, for Rice University. No, oh, really. So the huh. Bakers, and they're all lawyers, and they're all named James A. Baker, and he's the third, but he's actually like the sixth. But what they would do is after they get to the third, the next guy's a junior. So Peter Baker, of course, being no no relation, no relation, no relation. No relation. But they just can't help themselves today. Yeah. They all got to preach. They all got to throw stuff in there. We all know what the world was like in Texas in 1940. You don't have to remind me that it was a racist time. Yeah. That's got he that's got nothing to do with the story. It wasn't like he had some guy. It's just they yeah. just got to throw that in there. It just can drives I, me nuts. Can I make one again this is something you can deal with fine, but a guy who got very deserved good words today from both sides of the aisle amazingly enough, Lamar Alexander, oh, the yeah. retiring senator from Tennessee. Yeah. Very solid guy. Guy who's always like kind of a moderate conservative. I think he was education secretary uh, for some maybe for HW or somebody. Yeah. But my memory, I've got a distinctive memory of Lamar because he ran for president. I'm guessing maybe 92. And I was on one of my uh, New Hampshire primary trips. And my trip with my kid, Ian, uh, was, was a great trip. This is a, a trip that I, I think uh, my, my kid has very good memories of our fairly recent New Hampshire primary trip. Anyway, we're in, I think, Portsmouth. Lamar's running for president. And it was so... Um, and I'm, and I'm just up in the crowd there. But it was funny. He, he comes out in a flannel shirt, and then he had all his kind of young supporters, all like 20 years or so, about 20 of these guys come on the stage, join him in the same, in the same flannel. I'm sure an L.L. Bean flannel yep. shirt, but it was, uh, I remember that. Anyway, but anyway, Dude, he got I very good words. For a fact, yeah. I remember when Lamar Alexander uh, announced his, uh, running for president. Am I right? I'm guessing he came, nine. He, his video was in a flannel shirt. Oh, is that right? It was in a flannel shirt. Interesting. But he got very good words, obviously, from Mitch McConnell, and it and it actually sounded like sincere good words from uh, Chuck Schumer as well. But a very, very decent guy who will be missed. The Senate could use a lot more people like Lamar Alexander. So. Duke, before I forget, I mentioned last week of NBC, Comcast, Boston. Yeah. Lose, layoffs in oh, right. August. And sorry, I thought, geez, I, I had it in first. I didn't mention it. I had it in notebooks, yeah. but. Uh, right. The lovely Danielle Trotter. Yeah. Uh, Gary Tangway. Yeah. Ashrod Blakely. Wow. So uh, these guys are. Joe Haggerty, who right. I loved as a hockey guy. Yeah. Big, burly yeah. guy. Looks like guy that lived down the street. Jeez, with a, yeah. And yesterday it was announced, and he's on the basketball games uh, pregame. Uh, and I can't, I should know his name. Obviously not Scal. No, no he, he works with Scal. The black. Oh, the, oh Dra Dra Mike, Mr. Draper. Uh, Carl Draper. Carl, uh, Kyle Draper. Kyle Draper, sorry. Great, he's very, great very, guy. He's so easy to deal with. Sense of humor. Just, he takes the game. Yeah. On seriously serious. Yeah. Is he he's gone he too? Signed with the Sacramento Kings. Oh really. To work with them like he does with Boston. Huh. And also he would do the play by play games huh. where their play by play guy, if I remember right, is Mark Jones, who does ESPN games. Oh, so yeah. when Jones does ESPN games, huh. uh uh uh, Kyle, Kyle Draper, Kyle Draper, Draper will do the Kings game. So, oh, geez, what a what a loss and, of talent! That's and I'll tell you, there were games when uh, Mike Gorman would take off, like on Western Swings, and yeah. Draper would do he, the game do those, along yeah. with uh, Scalabrini. Yeah. Oh no, he's funny, very good. Funny, funny, and very easy, very yeah. easy to deal with. Yeah. Yeah. Oh no, that's a huge, huge loss. Yeah. Yeah, and sign the, sign of the times, I guess. Yeah. Huh? So. Uh, Base, baseball, we've mentioned this before, and we've seen this week some signs where the Vermont Lake Monsters probably will drown this oh, year. So. Uh, the New York Penn League looks like 
It will be it's like it's history, huh? They they named I don't know, maybe four clubs from the New York Penn League. And I don't have all my facts straight. That'll be kind of like a draft league, players being huh. drafted in June. There'll be a certain league for the new draftees. Because huh. I've mentioned it before. Yeah, you got, I mean, you got to do something with these kids. Right. Each major league team will only have four minor league teams. Huh. Uh, and the reality is, I mentioned it before, say David Handy was – the guy. We drafted him high in the draft, but we, we happen to put him in Burlington. All right. David needs eight other guys out in the field with him because Super Dave is going to be in the majors in, within three years. Well, Duke, you're a pretty good ball player. Hawk, you're pretty good. So you've got eight mediocre players out there <coughs> and potential David Handy out there because – <laughs> if you're playing on the Lake Monsters, you virtually have no chance to make it to the majors. Right. I mean, that's just the – they were overloaded with minor league teams in the first place. Um, will Burlington yeah. miss the Lake Monsters? Yeah, not as much as they did 10, 15 years ago. And not as much every once in a while you hear a politician or somebody saying oh, losing the Lake Monsters is a, is, a, is, a, is a horrible blow. And I'll miss them, but let's not exaggerate right. it. Right, right. Um, so the streamlining baseball, to me, it's just good business practice. I, I saw some, Well, the guys in the minor leagues are basically getting paid slave wages anyway. Right. Talk, my concern, if I'd like to think I'll be back in South Carolina in April, I'd sure like to think that. Give me the um, dates. Actually, I've got, a, I've got a good friend who you know well, who fed you very well the other night, who reported today that her, I think I think Jennifer had a, a March cruise somewhere that she wasn't holding her breath on. I think she said it got officially canceled today. Okay. Anyway, but what was that? Oh, so the Charleston River Dogs, full season, single A. Have I got any chance to see uh, my Yankees affiliate, the River Dogs? Or? In April? Maybe, well, I'm just saying, I'm just saying as a vaccinate. team. I would that's think, a full season, single A, they? I would think by April, anybody that wants right. to be. But that's my, my, my question is the team. Is that, is the, it's a Sally League, the South Atlantic League. Is that a league that might survive? Oh, full, full season, yeah, single yeah, A. I think so. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Well, double A is not going anywhere. Right. Double A is kind of right. like almost no, you got a triple key. A, double A, full season, single A, and a partial, like we talked about earlier, about the new draftees having a league for, for the new players. Well, you, be, might, you might almost think triple A might be more endangered than double. Isn't double A kind of the key minor league franchise now? Triple A. Triple A, a lot of times is, is, is just guys, older veterans who aren't going to make it are, to the right, big. Veterans might be 29 years old. Mm. They're very good. Not quite good enough to stick on the major league mm. roster. But they still want them around in case of injury. Double A is where your real hot prospects. But Triple A, presumably, hopefully they're not building this nice new stadium in Worcester for no, nothing. No, that's news to me. By the way, I didn't know Pawtucket was moving. Oh, we talked. To, oh, yeah. We talked. We oh, talked about that, news. Hawk. Have they broken ground? Oh yeah, oh, absolutely. Yeah. I think I think they may be ready for this. Yeah. If not this coming season, definitely the next yeah. one. Oh yeah, we've talked yeah. about that. Yeah, that's old news. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, Worcester. I mean, New England's. Is just sports territory yeah. in this country. They'll do fine. Um, so, and the other thing I would touch on before we get into anything heavy is uh, UVM winter sports. So, again, enough already. Put off, put off again? Yes, enough already. Why bother? Okay, huh? why bother? You've already spent millions on the teams this winter no. they haven't played a game somebody came up with covid don't know if it was a player or a in fact i think i think more than i think four four people i don't yeah. know if they were players or what i think four people connected to uvm hockey yeah. i think so i saw an interview with basketball coach john becker and the real caveat caveat of this whole conversation which made sense in Order to make it to the NCAA tournament. And of course, the uh, preseason coaches poll had UVM as the number one team. So we're going to assume in, gonna, in America East. America East, you have to play eighteen games. Okay, so you think, well, they, they can do that. So Becker says, all right, we we have to get eighteen games in to qualify. Say, you don't remember team? We're playing Binghamton. They come down with COVID. Okay. They're gone. We're, we're down two games. Then we have an incident. It's, it's not going to take long 
to, to get actually. Well, I got to assume they would amend the eighteen. I'll tell you if what, needs actually, to what, Duke, I think it was twelve games. If yeah. I were eighteen, uh, sounds high. If I it was were, twelve games. If I were coaching, I know it's uh, it's a little dumb, but if I were coaching, if I were coaching UVM basketball or UVM hockey, and I knew that one of the kids had COVID, I'd have a big party with the whole team there, mm-hmm. and everybody get it. And then it's all over. Yep. Then you're done. Yeah. And and then uh, look at look at the guys in the NFL. Look at like Gano. He had it. He's kicking the next week. These young guys, they get it. They're all better in a week. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. Right. As we discussed, it's. And then once they get it, then they can. Then then you're all good. No, you don't want to get it. But if you're 25 years old, it's no different than catching. You'll probably a survive just fine. Yeah. Uh, I we were having this discussion today. I think of the two, because I had a cousin of mine that got Lyme disease. I would that, that's rather something get COVID you sure don't We were disease. saying, that's just what we said, because, and it was undiagnosed for a long time, wow. man. He's been taking antibiotics for months, and it's, he's really, he doesn't feel, but COVID, I talked to a lady, I talked to a lady uh, last week who'd had it in October. And she was all better in a, in a few days. She still, still hasn't got her sense of smell back and taste. But she says, oh, I'm fine. I'm, mm. And uh, somebody that at work whose wife had it, and she didn't have anything. Mm. So, you know, why don't we just put everybody that's under 50 years old, stick them all in a room, mm-hmm. have a big blowout party, and then, and then the rest of us lock us up or give us vaccines, yeah. and then it'll be all over. Yeah. And that that makes too much sense to me. But no. but look at the the sporting events. You got guys like the, this football game got put off what four different days. Yeah, it was supposed to be it Thanksgiving. Yeah, then it was supposed to be Sunday. Then it was Monday. Then it was Tuesday. But the uh, Ravens were going to have a sit-down strike. They weren't going to play. Oh, I didn't hear that. that. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't know because that. they said, "Hey, look, we 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 need at least a couple of days to run through practice." Hmm. And then so finally, they came up with this Wednesday. Was this first Wednesday? Was this maybe first Wednesday football ever? Or have we run into not, this earlier but, in the season? It, but it, it's uh, it's not a regular. I realize that. Did I hear correctly that Baltimore violated protocol? I don't. Yeah. Hey, they all do. Look at look at poor. Uh, here's something we could have talked about. Look at Denver. All four of their quarterbacks yeah. all got it. Yeah, and they still and they they oh, still they're all better now. Oh, they're, they're all better. They're all week. back on the team oh, now. Right. Yeah, right. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. If I were a college, if I were the NCAA, I'd say, you know what, guys, take all your players. Mm-hmm. Stick them all in a room. Remember when you were a kid and somebody had them and, and one of your sisters had the measles? So they'd say, okay, you hang around them so you all get the measles and then it's over. That's what we should have done with this thing. The you know, thing I don't understand is the UVM Catamounts aren't playing basketball, yet you turn on ESPN last night and you got two top 10 teams, Michigan State and Duke playing. Not to mention, and followed by Kentucky Kansas. And I'm going to myself, I know I'm no doctor. But why are they playing? The UVM's not playing, or the UVM hockey's not playing. I turned on this in last Friday, and Amherst and I can't remember, you know, same conference teams playing. Why are they playing? And we're not playing. Well, probably it's, because Duke, Duke, and you know, Duke's in the ACC. You got <laughs> Kentucky, yeah, the Blue Bloods. Uh, they'll try to, yeah, try to play. And uh, and you know what? I think all the amount of trying to lock these guys up, trying to lock up 20-year-olds and keep them from hanging around with anybody. It's nuts. But, David, like hockey, UVM hockey, I I know we're getting a slight taste of winter today. Hockey season should have started literally two months ago. I I mean, we're almost halfway into the season right now. And... Would I? Well, obviously, I can't go to any games. So again, hockey. I've, I've been, lost interest. I've lost interest. It's just officially, I mean, it's not canceled. Oh no, it's just not suspended canceled. again. Or? Right, it'll be a very shortened season. Uh, uh, now, yeah, I mentioned why, last why week Norwich, sucked? in which I attend a lot of games. Their whole conference announced last week. They, they no, no season whatsoever. Yeah. So, Coach Ellsworth, Kim Ellsworth, and. Norwich is saying, well, we, we like to get something together, like play Plymouth State and Castleton. As, well, 
you know, it's like saying that I get a chance to go play golf with Jordan Spieth and I get to the country club and David Handy's there say, Jordan couldn't play, but you can play with me. It's like, (laughs) you know what I mean? (laughs) It's like, you know, you know, going down, watching council, uh, you know, it's like if, if the fiddler ain't going to show up, then cancel the dance. And so that's at the this way, point, you just, I mean, if you just as soon as the UVM just can just cancel. cancel. Not, not only money. that, is I can't show up in person. And yeah, I love that we have games on TV. I love the advent of uh, big screen, high def TV. However, hockey, you've got to be there, okay? Because Dave Handy may have the puck here, but the dude could skate in down there and the guy with the puck is in the play, it's, it's Duke. Well, the camera's going to be at handy, but if I'm sitting yeah. on the stands, just seeing Duke break down here, as I'm saying, oh, my God, Duke's coming down. Handy's going to pass him over here. And, you know, and I always tell there. people, you really want to watch a hockey game, don't watch the puck all the time. Yeah. Uh, basketball, it's great on TV. Uh, you know, football, I mean, I go down to the Giant game every year just to get a little adrenaline rush sure, with the crowd. I mean, but, uh, but again, there is there is some hockey. There's some Big Ten hockey. There is some oh, college hockey. Right. Cole Caulfield, the Canadians' number one draft pick from last year, yeah. it's having, he was rookie of the year. He plays for Wisconsin uh, in that conference last year, and he's off to a good start. And they're, So they're playing. Oh, there's, yeah, big, they're, there's Big oh, Ten yeah. hockey. Yeah, there's, they're playing oh. hockey. And again, I... Just jettison back to myself well, by saying, basketball. if they can, why can't we? Yeah. Well, you like know. I said, your your Dukes and Kentuckys of the world and Kansas has got a little little you know little different situation for them than your UVMs of the world. And so I'm just probably. so used to being slapped around. Last week was the night before Thanksgiving. Okay, our Thanksgivings usually about thirty people <clears throat> at Thanksgiving. This year. Six. Yeah. Okay. That was four more than me. It was Alex and myself, okay. two, two it of us. It literally felt like I went up to my mother-in-law's up in Sheldon for lunch. That's what it felt like. I went out for lunch because the adults, yeah, nice to see. But I like seeing all the kids yeah. and especially the grandkids. Oh, okay. Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. You can make and the case the best holiday. What a great holiday. Thanksgiving's the best. Um, I love the innocence of the holiday. Love to eat, love the leftovers, yeah. etc. And I, I love the conversation. Yeah, this uh, reminded me of God, I could do a turkey sandwich for supper tonight. Thank mm-hmm. you for talking uh, Thanksgiving. Well, our turkey was all gone. And, uh, we should I ask? Yeah. We're, uh, I, I can tell you what I don't. I don't want to get you in trouble. All he had a uh, button rock sand <laughs> and, and, the, the, and the two little guys. Two little fellas. Because... And mm-hmm. I don't, I, I don't want to apologize for that. I, I went with the uh, work at Bud every day, right? And we babysit the boys twice a week, mm-hmm. so it's not like we aren't seeing anybody, and we aren't seeing anybody else. I haven't. Even, my uh, poker game's been kaput for the last three weeks. Really, they were practically giving away. Uh, in fact, I went back to Hannaford at uh, the innkeeper's request, and the, the the basic place was out. I got some from out back, but Hannaford was selling turkeys, uh, frozen turkeys, last week for thirty seven cents a pound. I walked out of there with two fifteen pounders that cost me all of total about ten ten bucks. Well. Yeah, we got to get this thing over with. Uh, but well, it sounds like it. Like, I think I mean, we're on the, the tail end of it. The one, I mean, the big best good news is it does sound like the vaccine sounds like it's there's good. pretty good progress on the vaccine front. Yeah, I was telling Duke before you came in here tomorrow. I was scheduled to leave for Genoa, Italy. Wow. <laughs> I had a six o'clock flight for Italy tomorrow morning. That and, hurts. So I just sit at home. All that day. hurts. I've still got a, a flight. That's in limbo. First class from uh, Montreal to Las Vegas. For for when? It was for last April. Hopefully not this month. It was for last <laughs> April to go uh, to a GMC dealer meeting. No, really. And the reason I went out of Montreal was because it's really easy to fly from Montreal to Las Vegas. No stops. Right. One shot. Right. And I don't mind driving up for an extra hour so that I don't have to get sure. out of the plane. Sure. In fact, I'll be buying a ticket out of Montreal tonight to Venice next year, yeah, next right? December. But one way, I got to use way, it. Two hundred twenty bucks. Really? It's crazy. Wow. They uh, 
but it's uh, it's too bad. It's too bad. We uh, I usually every year for Thanksgiving I always go up to a there's a Lebanese grocery store yep. called Adonis. Right. It's right in the same. Uh, Ten thirty mall Br- where the Canadians had their practice in Broussard. In Broussard. In Broussard. Yeah. And uh, I usually pick up all kinds of stuff. <laughs> Don't you go up to a Lebanese restaurant? Yes, we do. Say I went up with you. Say you took two. Can I? Would I enjoy the Lebanese? You would food? love it. I would. No, if you sure, like I to mean, eat the Lebanese, Lebanese food is considered <clears throat> some of the best anywhere. Really? They love to eat and they eat everything. <laughs> Or Justin Trudeau, I think, just yesterday said, "Hey, folks, don't don't think the border is opening anytime soon." Oh, the Canadians! You know, we we discuss that a lot at, at home. Rock Sands a Quebecer. We got absolutely the problem with the, with Quebec is their with their measured socialist healthcare system. They don't have any room in the system for a surge. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Because Thinking. when you need, like her dad had a, yeah. and her dad's a very healthy guy, played hockey a lot and yeah. stuff. He needed a, a heart procedure. He had to wait like nine months to get it. That in. seems to be the big knock, knock for the Canadian health system. They don't have any, they don't have any slack. Now you take here, right. we've had this big surge in COVID, but you've only got, you got maybe 20 people in a hospital in the whole state. We, yeah. I'm sure we got 20 hospital beds. And so we can handle, we can handle a little bit more. Yeah. So that's, uh, the can- Canada's, uh, that, I, that's so awful that my grand, uh, that Roxanne's parents can't see their grandkids. Yeah. I mean, they do, uh, they do it on their well, Skype. Montreal's taken just an incredible hit again. I end my, I end my day with watching CTV news, 1130 to midnight. Montreal has just taken such a such a hit. And you know what? This second wave, it doesn't matter whether you wear your mask, whether you were locked down, or whether you were wide open. Yeah. It's all been the same wherever you go. They, it's no worse. Like my kid in Texas says, it's not that bad down there. So I think it's just because when you go indoors, I think that's when you they- said something last week, which was actually smart enough. For me to repeat to my wife, he said the deaths in this country for 2020 are, are the same at par of what they predict how many people will die at the first of the year. They say there were, what, 250,000 died from COVID, supposedly, uh, that the death rate was the flat, same. flatlined. It's, it's literally the same as the last five years. Yeah. It hasn't really. Yeah. Hey, I mean, hey, if you get it and you're really sick. Yeah, you really. And I don't want to pick on my good friend, the Duke here, but if you're 70 years of age and stuff, yeah, I would have some concerns about it. I'm 62, little chubby, diabetic. I I, I should have some concerns about it. But uh, I don't. Hey, we got uh, somebody that their grandfather got. It was 95 and he's all better. I mean, they're getting better at it. Let's just let's just hope that by spring. This thing's just a bad memory. I think, Duke, by April first, anybody that wanted the vaccine shot, because they're going to start. I guess lucky me, being as ancient as I am, you'd think I'd be uh, kind of towards uh, towards the front. Oh, Duke, you're you're a paragon of fitness. Oh, this he's healthier than ours. He's healthier than either you or I. I will say this: I I saw my doc today and got weighed weighed today, and uh, I've even lost some weight. I'm down to about 170. I think I'm just about five pounds over high school weight. I okay. haven't been 170 since I was in high school. Yeah. This guy right here. <laughs> but don't, I wouldn't exaggerate that too much. But at I'm the tender age of 70, play. I literally do not know anybody that's remotely close to him as is in physical yeah. condition. No, I mean, too he, when he golfs, he, he, he doesn't know what a golf cart is. Not that I use one, but he is one of the remaining few in this country that actually carry the golf bag. Yeah. I, I have a golf cart, a pull cart. A pull cart. I mentioned that to my doctor, today, who's uh, who I'll mention, who's uh, such a good guy. Unfortunately, I've got two of my good doctors retiring. Eddie Schumer, of course. I lost my right. dad. This is Max Bayard. Dr. Max is just a top-notch guy retiring in May. He's gonna, probably going to head back to Tennessee, but a great, a great guy who I will miss very much. So, no, but I, t- I told him today, um, I, I still put my bag over my shoulder. That's a, 
I was one of the last in my crew. I've only had a pull cart for the last few years. Yeah. Because I carried my I carried my bag for a long time. Speaking of golf hawk, can I just make one golf yep. note before it gets lost in the shuffle? We're down to our last, I, I guess our last uh, golf tourney of the year, and it's a decent one. Mexico? Mexico, Maya, Maya Coba. It's a, a great Norman design course. So I think they've been there every year, every other year. Yeah. But anyway, par 71, about 7,100 yards, but it's Don't a good course. Don't have the U.S. Women's Open, too, this week. What's that? U.S. Open. For women. Oh, is that, I'm sorry. I'm just talking men. Yeah. Yeah. Like, oh, is that right? Boy, if that's for women. true, we don't know about it. That's scary but, for them. But just five of the top 25, it's not a bad field. It's not a killer field. But Brooks Kepka and Justin Thomas, probably the two. Mm-hmm. And my man Camilo Vegas is, is there too. But Have you guys? Anyway. There's just something we can talk about. Have you? Did you watch the story of Camilo Vegas? Have you heard I, I, about, men, I mentioned him last week with his 22-month-old daughter. Oh, my having, God. It was so heartbreaking. Yeah. What a story. Would, and he had network. a great, this is, he played at the RSM Classic last week. What network? It was on, no, I, didn't, was there I a, think it was on golf, wasn't I didn't it? See or, it? So the golf, golf channel. Or HBO, story. I'm not sure. Uh, Check that out. He, no, I, uh, I didn't see it. I wish I had seen that because I love Camila. I almost think it was on golf. Oh, yeah, prob- probably was on golf. Because they, uh, they've, they like a lot of, th- they had, all the guys were wearing, because uh, huh. the, the little girl loved rainbows. Right. And right. so they were all wearing rainbow ribbons on right. their hats. And uh, yeah. she she was really uh, sick. It's, it's just uh, awful yeah. when you lose a kid. I can't imagine. But, so that was kind of the big kind of side story at, at the RSM Classic. Camilo, for the record, had a very good week. He faded a little bit, but still came in tied for six and I think pocketed about 220000 He had a pretty good week. So on uh, hockey, you guys would ask me every week once it's starting up. And I said, well, they're, they're thinking January 1st. Um, Gary Bettman today, and I quote, uh, the start date is a work in progress. Is that right? We're about four weeks away from January 1st. Wow. Still a work in progress. My prediction is going to be closer to February 1st than it is January 1st. Don't these guys have to do some practicing and stuff? Supposedly, there's a big... uh, They tried to go back to the players. They just made a new contract with the players. And then they went back... The owners did, and they want another twenty percent give back. Right, your salary's prorated, obviously. Right, but then they want up to twenty percent huh. reduction off that, uh, just because no fans in the seat. Now, huh. hockey more than any sport relies on butts. Okay, football. It's all television money, right. okay? Baseball. Okay. Hockey, a lot you got to have the bodies in there because hmm. they're a fraction of, of what baseball and basketball and football get. Um, didn't the NHL going back years, didn't they pay somebody to even tell Remember a couple years games? ago, they were paying, they were paying, they paying the, for somebody the playoffs to on TV. Yeah, Think right. about that. Um, so my prediction were we'll get into the NBA. Uh, they start up the 22nd and they'll play a 72 game schedule is it'll be closer to Feb 1st. Wow. And my guess is it'll be a 60 game schedule, wow. which is a little more than a quarter of the season. Wow. And you're going to see cadets teams like Boston and now Montreal with Jay Callen on the team, that backup goaltender is going to be very meaningful. Huh. With a tight had schedule, been, had there been a definite date before today, or the thinking had been Jan one? It's Jan one all along, and NBA, NBA is is nailed down, is it yeah. not? Yes, uh, and they came out yesterday or leaked out the. Uh, their big day is Christmas. They have five games on Christmas. But they're going to be traveling. They're traveling. We're not talking bubble places, or what are we talking? No, they're playing at home. They're their playing. own arenas. Okay. Uh, the Raptors. Well, what about the? Raptors? I think they're playing in Tampa. So the Raptors are staying south for the whole yeah, season, obviously, if, right? If I'm remembering correctly. Tim, Tim. So, I don't know. I don't care about my school. Right. I, I know. But but, but I, I watch every – I love the Celtics. Huh. And uh, the news today is Cumber Walker, speaking of February 1st, out his knee is still bad. I think when we got him, we got damaged goods. Uh, well, and, he's an old guy anyway. Well, he's, he's only a, about 30. Guy. Yeah, he's, not old, but he's got some miles. He's got some miles. My guess Siri, is, how old is Kemba Walker? 
Yeah, I guess 30, 31. 30. 30. Yeah, I, there you go. But 30, but that, but 30 for old, a basketball player. He's a, he's There's a lot 30. of miles yeah. on those knees. He's yeah. an old 30, I think. Yeah. Now, the news this week is they finally official the Gordon Hayward trade where he went to Charlotte along with two second-round picks for a second-round pick and a uh, – was a team ex, uh, exemption Something of twenty-eight and a half million, and I'm hoping you know more about this than no, I do. I don't. I was me, too I lazy don't. to really investigate. I this. don't. Hawk, I sorry. believe a team exception uh, or tra- trade exception. I'm sorry, trade exception, uh, twenty-eight and a half all-time NBA high is the Celtics can trade up to whether one or several players up to $28.5 million, where that does not go against your salary cap. Okay. So there's so many legalities with the NBA, it's really hard to keep up with. And, and then the money is so stupid. Well, like LeBron, crazy like stupid LeBron money. signed today a, a two-year extension of $85 million. Do the math, as $42.5 million a year. He gets... In in the NHL, if you're getting ten million, he eight, for eighty million. That's a team for a whole year, isn't that their uh, cap? Oh no, the cap for basketball. No, no for ba- for hockey. Oh, though. hockey is right. Yeah, right around eighty two. Yeah, you know, you're right. Uh, I, I, so I was saying, if you're getting ten million, you're a star uh, player. Not- I think the salaries are less in hockey today than they were when Johnny was playing. Um, is that real? Really? No. Johnny had Johnny had that. a five year. His last contract was five years, fifty million. Is that, um, is that right? I don't think it was that. Oh, high. I bet you. Well, that sounds that sounds high to me. Yeah, so. my I, my guess is four years, forty. Johnny I, was ten million a year. His last contract. Really? Really? <sighs> don't make me. Um, that's your homework assignment for next week. Hawk, here's just something out of the globe on basketball. I don't have I don't have knowledge about what you asked, but. This is a Globe Sunday. In other words, the Hornets chose to pay the injury-prone Hayward over Walker. Maybe you could say the injury. I guess Walker was an injury-prone Charlotte, who was the most popular player in franchise history. Charlotte made a statement with the Hayward signing. But the question is whether the contract will prove to elevate the franchise or will the club look so I look to move the deal. Look to move the deal in the final season, as it has for so many previous mm-hmm. over market yeah. signings. But I don't have a handle on the on that exemption thing. Yeah. So the Celtics will add a body like a Marvin Bagley from Sacramento type player. Uh, you know, Kemba said he is not playing until he says he's ready to play. Is there, he said that. Yes, and he embarrassed himself. Did he, did, did, during he say, the playoffs. did he also add that he shouldn't have played in retrospect? I didn't see that part of it. Mm-hmm. Although uh, Brad Stevens or Danny Ainge, they had a big press conference mm-hmm. yesterday saying they, mm-hmm. they might have not pushed, but mm-hmm. got Walker in when he should not have played during the playoffs. Dan Patrick today, I like Dan. Dan's a pretty solid guy, but he just happened to make a reference that Johnny? I did to the Celtics today saying, boy, the Celtics, good team, but I'm not seeing them as yeah. competing for the top spot. Johnny? Career yeah, earnings, right. $50 million. Right. But, but, but you said career But I think his last contract was about 40. his last contract. No, because he had a long career. My guess, he might have signed five years 25, 30 I million. Guess five or so. Oh, okay, here's I got it right here. <laughs> Rookie year 148. <laughs> the next two years 186. 93, 174. 94, 394. 95, one and a half million. 96, one and a half million. 97, three, 98, three, 98, three. Okay. His last four years, seven, nine, nine, nine. I knew it was big money. So you were a little, little. I was just a little bit. That's that's pretty impressive money. Hopefully Johnny is not having to, uh, you know, punch a. I earned every dollar of it too. I'll tell you why. He took a lot. Absolutely. He took a shellacking. All right, kids. That's it. That will conclude this edition of the Best Damn Sports Show in Franklin County. For Richie Cunningham, our engineer, our Super Dave, the Duke, I'm the Nahawk. Till next week, everyone. Remember, you do not have to be a great athlete to be a good sport. Ciao. See you later. Good job, guys. Good job.